Welcome to Box Recaps. Today I'm going to explain the movie A Series of Unfortunate Events, released in the year 2004. The movie starts and we see a 14-year-old girl named Violet who's an inventor. She's been keen to invent different kinds of objects for a long time. She has a 12-year-old bibliophile brother, Klaus, who happens to be very bookish. They also have a little sister who is a toddler and ends up eating everything she gets her hands on. One day, the children are orphaned when a mysterious fire destroys their mansion, killing their parents. Mr. Poe, the family banker, manages their affairs and leaves them in the care of Count Olaf, a nefarious stage actor intent upon obtaining their family fortune, which will remain in the custody of the bank until Violet turns 18. When the banker leaves the kids at his house, the kids look around. They go on to see that the house is very strange. It is a big and old house where they see spider webs everywhere, and the whole house is empty. There is one room in this house where no one is allowed to go. Count Olaf goes on to make it abundantly clear to the kids that they are not at all allowed to go there. The whole house is really dirty, so Olaf goes on to tell the three kids that they are going to have to clean the whole house. The three kids, who belong to a rich family, are made to do these chores, and they start cleaning the house like servants, as we see them mopping floors. Count Olaf is really mean to the kids, as we see him belittling them again and again. The kids are really tired after all the chores, and this is when Olaf's friends come over. They are as mean as Olaf himself. They go on to bully the kids, and Olaf tells them that he's really hungry, so the kids are going to make something for him and all his friends as well. When the kids go to the kitchen, it is really dirty. They see insects crawling everywhere, but they have no choice but to cook there. After a lot of hard work, the kids go on to make some pasta. Count Olaf does not like the food at all. He gets pissed at the kids and goes on to scold them, saying they don't know how to do anything. He even slaps Klaus. The kids are already traumatized by the death of their parents, and on top of that, this man keeps brutalizing them. They, however, have nowhere else to go. So Violet tells her siblings to make do with what they have. The whole house is haunted, and kids keep getting scared. So Violet goes on to make a nice tent for them where the three kids sleep. The next day, Count Olaf makes his way to the court where he tells the judge that he is now the legal guardian of these kids. The court also agrees and gives him in writing that he is the legal guardian of the kids. Now that he has become their legal guardian, he comes up with a plan. He knows that if he is able to get rid of these kids, he can become the owner of their wealth because if the kids are to die, the property will go to the guardian's name. He decides that he is going to have the kids die now. He makes them sit in his car and drives towards a railway track. He puts the car right in the middle of the railway tracks, locks the doors, and gets out of there. The kids at first do not realize what is going on. They wait for him to come back, but when he does not come back for a while, the kids realize that the train is going to pass through this track in a few minutes. They right away go on to call the banker, and it turns out the banker is near the railway track and the train is coming. The banker is not able to hear the kids because of all the noise. If these kids do not get out of the car right away, they will die. The smart girl tries to come up with a plan. She sees a toy in the car. This toy is moving, which means it has a big spring attached to it. When the train is just about to approach them, they divert the train by building a device to remotely activate the railroad switch. Mr. Poe arrives and takes them away. The banker also gets there in the meantime, and he is shocked to see that the kids are in the car, and it has been parked right in the middle of the railway track. The banker, however, is an absolute jerk. When he sees the little Sonny on the driving seat, he goes on to think that Count Olaf allowed the little girl to drive, and that is why they are stuck in the middle of the railway track. Count Olaf also gets there in the meantime, and the banker goes on to scold him for allowing a little girl to drive. The other two kids try their best to make them understand that Count Olaf tried to kill them, but the banker is unable to understand anything. The banker, however, goes on to decide that he is going to give custody of these kids to another relative. They are then taken to their uncle, Dr. Montgomery, an eccentric but kind herpetologist. He has a lot of snakes and frogs and does different experiments on them. The kids are now in his house, where they go on to see that there are weird creatures. He has many types of frogs. He has a lot of snakes, too. Montgomery then goes on to take these kids to show them around the house. He shows them different snakes, and in the end, he goes on to introduce the kids to a giant viper. When the man opens the cage of the snake, the viper right away tries to attack the kids, and they get scared. 
Montgomery, however, grabs the viper by the neck and tells the kids that this viper could never kill a human being. He tells the kids that this snake is actually human friendly, and earlier he did not try to attack them, rather he was being playful. Montgomery is a good man, and he loves the kids. The next day, an assistant named Stefano comes to see Montgomery. He is there to take a job, and Montgomery welcomes him. It turns out this is not Stefano, it is actually Count Olaf, disguised as Stefano. He is an actor, so it is not difficult for him to act like another person, and he makes his intentions known. He is there to kill the kids. The kids go on to recognize the man right away. They try to inform their uncle by giving him different signals, but Montgomery is unable to understand what they are saying. The kids then go on to write the message on a snake and make the snake crawl towards Montgomery. When he reads the message, he understands that this man has disguised himself as Stefano, but by the time he gets to know this, it is already too late. Montgomery then just disappears. After a while, the kids start looking for him, but they are unable to find him anywhere. Later on, the police arrive at their house, and when the kids ask what's going on, where is their uncle, they are told that Montgomery is dead. When they ask how he died, the officer tells them that he was attacked by the viper, and that became the cause of his death. The kids are shocked to learn this, because these kids were told by their uncle that this snake never kills humans. They try to tell this to the banker and the police officer, but no one listens to them. The kids also try to tell the banker that this man is not Stefano, and that he is Count Olaf, but they think the kids do not know what they are talking about. This is when Sunny goes to the cage of the viper, and the viper does not attack her, it rather starts playing with her, and the banker sees this. The police officer also sees this, and now they understand that the kids were actually right. They also know that this man pretending to be Stefano is also Count Olaf, but before they are able to catch Count Olaf, the cunning Olaf manages to get out of there. Mr. Poe leaves them with their Aunt Josephine, a grammar-obsessed widow with panphobia. Her house is on the edge of the sea on a cliff. She keeps getting scared of everything around her, and that is the disease she has. The woman goes on to show the kids around the house and keeps getting scared of different stuff because she thinks every little thing could just kill her. The kids are then taken upstairs by the woman who shows them their room. The room has a big window and the aunt tells the kids never to open this window. It is expected that there is going to be a storm, so the aunt, along with the kids, make their way to the market to stock the food items for the next few days. When they are in the market, they are approached by a ship captain, and as the captain talks to the kids, they right away learn that this is Count Olaf disguised as a ship captain. The kids try their best to tell it to their aunt, but she is unable to understand what the kids are trying to tell her. Count Olaf goes on to flirt with the woman, and the aunt takes the disguised Count Olaf to her place. The kids right away understand that something bad is about to happen. After a while, the kids try to find their aunt in the house, but the woman is nowhere to be found. The kids then go upstairs and see that the giant window about which their aunt told them, that window is broken, and there they also find a note. It is a suicide note, in which the aunt has written that she is taking her own life. The kids understand that it is the doing of Count Olaf for sure. As they go on to read the note, there are many grammatical mistakes in the writing, which just makes them sure that this note is not written by their aunt, because she hated the people who made grammatical mistakes. Klaus, who has been reading books for a long time, he right away understands that there is a message being given in those grammatical mistakes. When he decodes the mistakes, he understands that it is the name of a cave. They now think that it could be their aunt who is trying to give them the message. She could still be alive and hiding or taken to that cave. Before they are able to leave the house, there is a big storm out there, and they are stranded in the house. The kids are impatient as they want to save their aunt, so they somehow manage to get out of the house. They take a boat and row towards the cave where they think their aunt is hiding. They get to the cave and find their aunt there. She is really happy to see the kids. She is excited that they found her. They make her sit on the boat and start heading back home. But on the way, they are surrounded by a lot of leeches. The kids panic. They then see another boat approaching. This boat is a little bigger, and they make the help signal toward that boat. They approach them, and the kids see that the man in the boat is actually Count Olaf. Count Olaf drags the kids to his boat, but he is unable to drag the ant. She is then attacked by the leeches and dies in the sea. When Olaf gets to the beach with the kids, he is confronted by the fool banker again. He says that he has saved the kids' lives. 
The kids try to tell the banker that it is Olaf in disguise, but the fool banker does not understand what they're talking about. Count Olaf then tells them that he's going to conduct a drama and tells them that they also have to take part in that drama. When they get to his place, they see that the drama has been titled The Marvelous Marriage. These kids are smart. They right away understand what is the plan of this man. He is going to marry Violet in that drama. He himself is the groom, and Violet is to play the role of the bride. Klaus's suspicions reveal that he's planning to take advantage of the play to really marry Violet in an attempt to get the fortune, using legally recognized vows in a bona fide justice of the peace. Klaus and Violet then go to see Count Olaf, and Violet goes on to tell him that she is never going to play that part in his play. She then goes on to say that this is a drama. Even if he wants to marry her, he's going to need a real judge to make that marriage official. This is when he goes on to introduce his neighbor, who is a real judge. She is also going to be a part of this play, and she will play the role of the judge, of course. Everyone is going to think that it is a fake marriage, but it is going to be a real marriage. This is when Violet tries to play her last card, as she tells him that she is never going to sign those papers, at which he tells her that he has her little sister. He locks Sonny up in a birdcage, threatening to drop her to her death if Violet refuses to take part in the play. Despite the fact that Violet hates this man's guts, she has to marry him because she does not want to lose her little sister. Klaus escapes and finds a hidden tower in Olaf's house, where he goes on to discover a large window with a set of lenses that, if positioned correctly, can focus the rays of the sun. He realizes that Olaf used it to set fire to the Baudelaire mansion. Using the window, Klaus manages to burn the marriage certificate, leading to Olaf's arrest, but he escapes later on. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny are taken to visit the charred remains of their old home one last time. A lost letter from their parents finally arrives, and inside is a spyglass announcing their family's secret society. Snicket finishes writing his documentation and hides the papers in the clock tower for his publisher to find. He concludes that despite the siblings' recent unfortunate events, they have each other. The banker drives the kids to their next home, and with that, this movie comes to an end. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.